Now we will go to Rachel Blaney for two and a half minutes, three minutes. You have the floor, Ms. Blaney. Here. So if I could just go quickly to Sandy. I believe you told a story about a veteran who's put aside, I think you said about $153,000 so far for his wife. Um, and now I understand the wife is not doing well and will probably not make it. And I, I just want to clarify that with the way these pensions work, Folks are giving up part of their pension, between 30 to 50 percent of their pension, every single month. But if their loved one passes before they do, that pension disappears and all of that money is returned. Could I just get clarity on that? Uh, the money is not the money is not returned to the uh, pensioner. The government keeps the money. So in that case, there's a hundred and some thousand dollars that invested in her security. If she passes, not a penny goes back to the pensioner. And you got to remember, pensioners get small amounts. Uh, you know, a, a, a big pension is two thousand dollars. If you uh, give up fifty percent of that to make sure your spouse is taken care of, your family has to live on a thousand dollars a month. Uh, you know, after putting your life on the line, especially, you know, the RCMP for sure, I've been in some bad situations and you just do it again. Can you imagine soldiers that are given up huge portions of their life, the most productive portion, and can't afford to provide for the spouse? And in, in if he does pay into it or she pays into it, that money's lost. So is it a 50% chance of profit for government? Uh, I'd hate to think that was their thinking, but that is the reality. Okay, if I could come to the federal retirees, I guess I want clarity on that. If I could hear if there's any other jurisdiction that doesn't do that or allows survivor pensions. But I also want clarity um, about... If you are 55 and you're a retiree, a federal public retiree, if you retire at 55 and then you get married at 68, is this apply even though you got married before 60? I'm just, I need clarity on that. If I could leave that to the federal retirees. Patrick? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, so a couple of things there. So uh, first off on f federal retirees, how that works. Uh, so if you uh, got married at 58, yeah, yeah, but it is after your retirement, then it's after retirement. It's basically right after retirement. It's basically when you get your first paycheck as a retiree. Um, I, then that's very similar to other just jurisdictions and uh, other pension plans B basically across the country this is fairly common in pension plans uh, the, these kinds of after marriage types of things uh, they've existed in pension plans for for ages which doesn't mean it can't change it's just the way it's been um, but it does have as uh, two members already brought, uh, brought it up it, it does exist in Quebec for example there there is no uh, marriage after 60 there, it, there is no discrimination based on age uh, in, ter in the pension plan uh, in Newfoundland there isn't um, for the public service uh, and also the CAT pension plan. Those are the only three examples I'm aware of. The vast majority of plans have um, something similar like uh, as this. But again, like I said, just because it exists doesn't mean it can't change. Um, and if the, you're common law uh, yeah. and then you get married mm -hmm. after 60, so common law at 55, get married at 60, is there any change yeah. there? In Five seconds, please, or may be that Mrs. Blaney will come back with that question. Go ahead, Mr. Embo. For federal retirees, no, there's no, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can be, you can be common law beforehand and, and continue, as long as you can prove the relationship existed prior to the retirement. 